Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Suraj Gri, uh, anesthesiologist, uh, working in a community health center, Sipsagar, Assam. And it is, uh, my place is around, uh, you can say, 400 kilometers east of Guwahati. Today, I'm going to discuss about uh, our model of snake bite management. Uh, it is in a, how to establish a comprehensive, easy model of approach to snake bite victims in India. And this is the danger, ladies and gentlemen, 5.4 million global snake bite cases, 2.8 million snake bite cases in India. It is called, India is called capital of snake bites. One lakh deaths every year due to snake bite. And out of this around half, that is around 50,000 people are dying in India. And these are reported cases and there are many such unreported cases people are dying on the way to the hospital or they are dying in the in, in home itself which are not notified at all so this is a real danger now why india needs and comprehensive care because the first and foremost cause is that there is no awareness in the society we are believing our ancient thing. And there are stories that snake bite means death. And whenever snake bites happen, herbal medicine is the treatment. So this, this was taught to us. This was told by our grandmother, grandfather, and even this is written in our different stories, ancient stories. That is why they have trust in the healers, bhavas, mantras, and the tantras. They do not have any pain on the medical system. They apply dangerous pre-hospital care. They tie, they suck, they sometimes they cut to let venom go. At the same time, the people who comes to the hospital, very less numbers, they are not treated properly because our healthcare workers are not trained adequately, especially in the rural district hospital. The fear of giving ASVs, the fear of airway management, the fear about uh, the uh, anaphylaxis due to ASVs. At the same time, there are poor transportation system to the hospitals from village to the hospitals. At the same time, there are no financial support to the victim's family because they have to run from this hospital to the other. And if there is some long-term complications, like if he needs tracheal intubations, long-term ventilation, tracheostomies, wound care, and it will drain a lot of money. And if, suppose, they come to the hospital and we try to excuse their pocket, then probably they are not going, uh, not uh, coming to us. They'll rather believe in our their old system, and they uh, definitely uh, wants to go to the paid healer. And this is not an declared an acute emergencies. Now, whenever accident victim comes to the hospital, our healthcare workers jump on them. They treat accordingly. They becomes active, but this is not happening in the snake bite patients. And meet that snake bite cases can only be treated in an ICU setup, in an in a tertiary care only. This is a meet. So we are describing our own protocol, our own patient, which we have successfully managed in community health center. Now, what is a comprehensive care? Comprehensive care means it should be preventive. It means we have to prevent the bite of the snake with a human being. Because that conflict between a human being and the snake, you have to prevent. So you have to do awareness program with the society. It should be coordinated, coordinated between the, the village, the healthcare workers. And if you want to refer the patient to higher center from healthcare that set up to the tertiary care hospital doctors, it should be coordinated. If you are practicing snake bite victims, and you're successfully managing those victims, especially the cobra and the crane bite, 
you promote it write it down write blogs for the publics use your social media we are using facebook and the whatsapp extensively in this matter curative your treatment your your protocols should be curative one means patients should completely recover uh, from the effect and if possible there should not be any residual effects mental you have also think about the psychosocial issues because till now the concept is snakes means we all scared about it the patients feel fear psychosis and that will lead to a lot of mental issues that we have also deal to it socioeconomic condition as we, i have explained we have to reduce the um, uh, this um, treatment cost to the patient as far as possible who is we are also working that now means these all things we are doing in our community health centers the first and foremost that we are doing from last uh, you can say from 2008 itself is we went to the community small communities we did small awareness program and we did awareness program in the facebook we did awareness program in the various um, uh, with the help of various ngos and in that small small communities we formed a venom response team now they train people that what we have, we have trained them these are called a venom response team now this trained team will first notify and up, not, notify the um, snake bite victim to us through the whatsapp group and at the same time they will transfer the patient scientifically to the nearby hospitals and at the same time we are helping them to uh, identify the snake and we are also helping them to uh, to not to kill non venomous snakes or the venomous snakes now it is our turn to form a team because once the patient comes to the hospital we have to give an effective treatment for that we train our healthcare worker and these healthcare workers are called a fast response team they can identify snake bite victims they can identify the early neurotoxic symptoms they can inject the asp uh, themselves with consultation with the doctors so it is called a fast response team that was brt venom response team and this is called fast response team now many a time we heard we or we hear uh, in the news or in in in, in our investigations of the snake bite victim deaths that the hospital is not prepared enough to treat sudden neurotoxic symptom patients okay the patients uh, there's day to day routine works are going on in a hospital in a community health center and suddenly neurotoxic victims comes to the hospital and uh, the doctors or the healthcare workers they want to give the asb anti snake venom but they do not know where it is they do not know the expiry date of the anti venom they do not know Uh, how many vials are there they do not know where is the neostigmine they do not know where is the adrenaline means these all drugs equipments are not organized so what we have did we 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 have established a snake bite room and in that room we are keep we are keeping all essential medicines and equipments we are putting the anti venom we are putting the uh, adrenaline hydrocortisone phenylamine we have uh, uh, putting them there the new stigmins that is the myoparalytic injection airway equipments like endotracheal tube lms isel oxygen therapy everything is there at the same time and we have uh, displayed the venomous snakes of our local area so whenever the patient comes uh, to the snake bite room and they says oh sir sir, sir this is this is the snake this is the snake that he has bitten me so it becomes easier and if the patient says that none of the snakes has bitten me means uh, the patient was not bitten by venom or snake so this becomes easier and there we have also displayed what to do what not to do after the snake bites so we have we have did three things in from 2000 uh, since 2008 number one trained or educated the public we formed a brt that is called the venom response team and this venom response team may be any any persons of the society number 
we have trained our healthcare workers that is called the frt fast response team and number three is we have strengthened our healthcare system by establishing a snake bite room now with available uh, these um, snakes in and around uh, our local area we have formed a protocol for our hospitals so if the patients comes in the day or the night time with a history of pain swelling difficulty in swallowing blood clotting present then it is maybe a cobra patient is having pain swelling no blood clot at 20 minute or after 24 hour that is called uh, maybe a peed viper now if the patient comes to night time then we have to think this two plus you have to also think patient has no pain no swelling but blood clotting presence then probably it is a crate neurotoxic symptoms may appear by 24 to 72 hours in case of crate bite that is why we all put the patients for 24 hours observation all snake bite patients are treated as a venomous bite unless probed otherwise and if they develop symptoms in 24 hours yes they are labeled as a venomous bite and if there is no doesn't develop any symptoms by 24 hours they are termed as a non-venomous bite now we do not have any kit to diagnose whether it is a venomous or non-venomous snakes we have to wait for the symptom and the signs now uh, we have also displayed these things uh, in our uh, snake bite room. That is, uh, if the patient comes with a neurotoxic symptom, we initially start with 10 vials of ASB in 300 ml of NS and plus injection myoparolate at 30 minute interval. We used to give five doses of uh, my, um, this uh, myoparolate injection. And if in this uh, five doses of myoparolate injection and 10 vials of ASB or 20 vials of ASB patient improves, then it is possibly cobra bite. Okay. Cobra bite causes post synaptic block. But in a crate bite causes pre synaptic block, means pre synaptic vesicles, it destroys the pre synaptic vesicles. And if there is no improvement after five doses of myopyrolate, we stop giving myopyrolate, then we start giving calcium gluconate, and then we think of referring the patient to higher center with ambubec and, and max ventilations, because he may need tracheal intubation and ventilations. But in case of pit viper, we do not give any ASB, we, uh, we treat it conservatively so this is what the protocols we are following so we are uh, means we have formed these protocols and uh, our every healthcare workers are uh, following the protocol and we have to empower our healthcare workers about the asb reactions so that also that is also displayed in the wall like this so if there is an asb reaction stop give adrenaline and again start uh, asb uh, infusion, ladies and gentlemen. So that we have trained our healthcare workers from uh, nurses to uh, uh, technicians to the cleaner itself. Then we have to think about the psychosis issues. See, this lady was beaten by a non venomous snake, but she presented like an uh, the symptoms of a venomous snake. She has a broken neck syndrome like symptoms. She has a respiratory discomfort like syndrome. She has a chest pain. Everything was there. But later we found that she was actually bitten by non venomous snakes. And these symptoms are because of the psychosis. She have to uh, see underwent around uh, 30 days of psychosis treatment. And ultimately, she is fine. So not only means our, our, our treatment doesn't end like uh, treating the, uh, this uh, neurotoxic bite only, doesn't end by improving the neurotoxicities. It, it, we have to follow the patients up to at least for the one month and uh, whether he is developing, uh, developing psychosis or not, because there is a possibility of fear psychosis in this group of the patients, snake bite victims. Now you have to think about the economic conditions. Say this patient was bitten by cobra and there is a big ulcerations and we have uh, treated in the community health center itself and you can see uh, it is uh, the, the shape 
after around 30 to 40 days of treatment. Same thing applies to this uh, girl. She had this uh, post cobra bite ulceration, and you can see uh, it is doing now uh, better. And uh, this is, you can see this neurotoxicity she developed after 30 minutes of arrival to the hospital. Now, this group of patients, she is a daily worker. She is a daughter of daily worker, and he is also a farmer. Now, if we send these patients to higher centers or nursing homes or the private setup, then what will happen? There is a huge burden of economic, uh, economy to this group, this group of the patients. They cannot afford it at all. So this can be treated at the community health center itself. So you have to uh, look about the financial impact of the uh, snack by two. So that also we are uh, we, we are looking after in our in our hospital. Now how will approach? Suppose ep even after doing lot of uh, awareness program, and if we have found that twenty percent of the patient still comes like this. So there are multiple by uh, tunicam, you know. So he has bitten here, the snake has bitten here, and he has a multiple tunicate. Now, there is a story, and there is also thing that, that our healthcare worker doesn't want to remove the tunicate because there, are, uh, there is in one history in our state also, the patient was uh, having four to five numbers of the tunicate, and the doctor has removed the tunicate. And the moment he has removed the tunicate, patient died. But later it was found the patient was actually uh, bitten by the non venomous snakes. Then what happened to the patient? Then we can explain this. Now, see, the patient is having a uh, tunicate here in the hand, and bite mark is here. Now, they used to tie the hand with, uh, very tightly means it, 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 they will use to use very tight uh, tourniquet uh, just proximal to the bite. Now, uh, this tying uh, causes accumulations of uh, free radicals means they, because, because of this uh, tie or tourniquet, now what will happen? There is an uh, anaerobic metabolism. And this, and because of this anaerobic metabolism, the toxic metabolites accumulates here, so like carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, lactic acid, et cetera. The moment you remove this suddenly, then what will happen? This toxic metabolite suddenly enters into the uh, central circulation and that will cause cardiac arrest to the patient. And probably that has happened to the, uh, big, uh, that happened to the patient. Now, what we have protocolized that if the tourniquet is more than one, one hour's duration, then what we do, we make the patient supine, we put in BP cup like this proximal to the tourniquet. Then, uh, we inflate the BP cuff up to 200 millimeters of the mercury, inflating the tourniquet up to 200 millimeters of the mercury. Okay. And now I am removing the tourniquet. Okay. After removing the tourniquet, I am slowly deflating the BP instrument cuff and slowly, slowly, slowly releasing this toxic metabolites to the circulations, that anaerobic, uh, that, that uh, you can say free radicals to the circulations. And that way we can protect the patients. Uh, so if it is less than one hour, there is no issue. If it is greater than one hour, you have to uh, take this, uh, we have to use these procedures. Now, if you think that the snake bite is a venomous snake bite, and uh, if there is a two to three numbers of the tourniquet, never ever remove the tourniquet. You give ASB, you treat accordingly, then only slowly remove the tourniquet. If, if, if you think it was a uh, venomous snake bite. Now, these are the uh, local, uh, means in our Assam, these are the uh, venomous snakes which are available in our Assam. This is green peat viper, this is monoslate cobra, this is banded creed, and this is black creed, and this is the redneck killback, and this is the king cobra. Now, see, it depends upon the, your local area. So uh, the Russell vipers, as well as the saw scale vipers, are not available in our Assam. So we are getting patients, large numbers of the patients by bitten by the peat viper. This is commonest, followed by monoslate, and then black creed, and then banded creed, and then redneck killback. Now, the the people are dying because of the monoslate cobra because the patient 
uh, doesn't come to the hospital early and when they come and they are in a critical situation which we cannot save at all now the red neck kill back uh, it it has teeth uh, in the hind jaw uh, so uh, most of the time it, it cannot uh, give the uh, inject the venom to the patient and if he wants to uh, inject the venom he have to chew the he have to hold the hand or the leg and then he have to chew like this then only he can inject the uh, venom to the patient so we are getting patients from the pit viper cobra and the black rate and the banded rate so this is a big snake that is the king cobra so the conflict with the king cobra is not happening so we are not getting any patient of king cobra till now this is called the uh, spectacle cobra and you can see this is the assam meme this russell vipers is not available in assam the few part which are adjacent to the bhutan and the bangladesh there is a there you can find the russell vipers but we have not uh, found any report of russell vipers bite in assam so you have to think about your local area so in local ge geographic area you have to think what venomous snakes are available or what harmful snakes are available in my area now venomous snake has bite marks and never ever comment about the bite marks yes they have bite marks but these are all misleading never comment on the basis of the bite marks. We have to depend upon the syndromes. We do not have any kit to diagnosis that this is the venomous or non-venomous snakes. We have to wait for the symptoms. If there is a symptom, venomous. If there is no symptom, non-venomous. Yes, there are two distinct bite marks. Most of the time is present, but this is not true always. And this seems to be a non-venomous. Yes, it is non-venomous snake bite. Here you could see there is a multiple bites and that seems to be a non-venomous, but if you closely, if you see there are two bite marks are there and which turns out to be a venomous bite. So never comment on seeing the bite mark, ladies and gentlemen. Symptoms, it may be local, it may be systemic, it may be neurotoxicity, or it may be hematotoxic. Let's find a few of the cases. So uh, if uh, local there may be swelling there may be excruciating pain the swelling may progress up to the hip joints so always you have to monitor the swelling if there is a uh, circulation is compromised you have to take uh, give this uh, nick in this uh, um, in, in, in the skin that is called a fascia domain to release the pressure so you always measure and record and document the swelling of the limb and few of the patient they uh, they come with a swelling and mild pain but without coagulopathy, without neurotoxic symptom. And these are called a cytotoxic effect, means the local effect. And for the cytotoxic effect or the local effect, we do not give ASB at all. And But what we do is a magnesium sulfate and glycerin. The magnesium sulfate that comes in a crystal, uh, we mix up with uh, glycerin and we give a tight compression bandage here and which decreases the swelling. And because this magnesium sulfate works as an uh, potent anti-inflammatory as an. Now, in case of neurotoxic symptoms, what we have gathered till now is that the first and early symptoms is uh, uneasiness, restlessness, throat pain. Sometimes they feel a lot of thirst and they vomits and uh, the complex of blurring of vision, dizziness and difficulty on swelling. These are the first steps and the, the patient is in the first stage. So next is they goes into the tosis and there is a uh, weakness in the muscle, decrease in the respiratory, um, this, um, uh, this SpO2 level, and gradually they go, goes into the coma stage that is called the third stage. So if you do not intervene. So in this stage, because of our extensive awareness program, the people are coming to the hospital early. Within one hour, they're coming. And whenever they complain these type of symptoms, we aggressively treat uh, with the ASBs and myoprolin injection. And ladies and gentlemen, we are saving many uh, patients by this following this uh, this early and the first uh, symptoms of the neurotoxicity. Yes, sometimes there may be color changes, and this is indicates the patient was bitten by the cobra. Then we uh, treat accordingly. Now this is a, there are many cases of great bite, but uh, this is not possible to discuss every cases. Here I am putting only one case, which is very much interesting, and he uh, was bitten by a black colored snake at around 6 p.m. and he came to hospital uh, after I can say around uh, 
one hour or one and a half hour. But he, he was beaten in this uh, index finger and he has no pain, swelling, anything. The society feels whenever there is a snake bite and there should be pain or swelling like that. But in case of crane bite, the crane uh, snake has a very small teeth and you can say infant teeth. And whenever they bite, they doesn't uh, put uh, any swelling, they doesn't cause any pain to in the local area. So crane when bites, no pain, no swelling in the local area. Patient feel that I am not, I'm not bitten by a Benama snake. Now, when he came to the hospital, he has no pain, no swelling at the bitten area. And he wanted to go to hospital as he has no symptom, but our sister told him that if you go to the hospital, you'll be arrested by the police. And then he stayed in the hospital by uh, around six hours or so at around 10, uh, around uh, at around 11 or 11 30 and he developed neurotoxic symptom he developed uh, difficulty in swallowing difficulty to uh, deglute his uh, saliva and then tosis he developed and immediately 10 vials of asv was injected we thought he may require tracheal intubation and again we uh, put uh, 10 vials of asvs but uh, he did not require any tracheal intubation because he was there in the hospital. He was admitted. He was under observation. Moment he developed the uh, symptoms, we injected the um, um, ASP and uh, that will preventing the tracheal intubation and ventilation, ladies and gentlemen. This is another study and who has beaten by a black uh, snake and she came to us and after one hour, uh, she developed uh, uh, drowsiness and as well as the tosis immediately, immediately ASB and uh, myoparilate injection was injected. And after two doses of myoparilate and ASB, she recovered fine. This patient was beaten by the pit viper, green pit viper. And after, uh, you can say this is around 200 kilometers from my place and uh, they went for the fate healer treatment and one of our BRT because I have I have shared my numbers in the Facebook and the WhatsApp and uh, one of our BRT he called me that these things are happening the the snake bite there is a snake bite and but they are they, uh, go, going for a local treatment and fate healer treatment and uh, what to do I told them that uh, send the patient to us and we're going to treat him uh, treat her and then we can see that this petechi or this ecchymosis was there and INR was around 80 of this uh, patient and uh, she was treated, uh, treated conservatively with uh, uh, maxal dressings and all and she recovered well. So this is another uh, girl, so uh, four, uh, three-year girl and she was beaten by the peat viper. You can see the INR level 60.2 and in the left hand, she was beaten and she was treated conservatively without any ASBs and, on, and uh, blood products, ladies and gentlemen. Because what we have observed in our clinical experiences that in the pit viper bite, the ASB does not work. And in the pit viper bite, and if there is no spontaneous bleeding, you just wait and observe spontaneously, things will become reverse that we have observed and it will be published in our uh, in, in international journal soon. Now, anti-snake venom is not always a solution, ladies and gentlemen. Just uh, we are um, um, reviewing our hundred numbers of the patient beaten by the peat vipers only. So there is a swelling involving two joint in seventy-six patient and local swelling in twenty-four patient and no blood clotting at sixty-two percent and no blood clotting after twelve hours. Means uh, if the patient has no symptoms, you should not detach the patients. You should. Uh, put the patient in a ward for 24 at least because sometimes the symptoms really appear late. So what we have observed uh, uh, around 79% of the patient uh, where the blood clot was uh, seen in 10th day and there is a good ioner means ioner uh, when uh, when they comes uh, around uh, it becomes around 70, 80 like this uh, like this and then by 10 days the ioner becomes normal. Now, 20 minute whole blood clot test is just a bedside test. And this is an easy and economic test. You can see how we do it. We take the uh, two ml blood and put in a clear test tube and which is not washed by any detergent solution. And it should be glass tube only and put the blood there and you it should be keep like this for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you just dip like this. So if it is clotted, you can see, 
everything is okay fine so if it is uh, non clotted means it is a peat viper mean non clotting of the blood it confirms that snake bite is an the snake is a venomous snake and that is a peat viper but if there is a clotting is there it does indicates it is not a peat viper but there is a possibility it may be a crate or it may be a cobra bite so this is uh, because of our extensive training to the BRT, extensive training uh, of the local people. The people are doing this blood clotting test at, at their residence itself by the help of ASA worker. So sometimes uh, there may be gangrene or there is a ischemia. You can see the uh, there is no blood flow in the finger. And we have just made a nick there. And ultimately uh, we have released the pressure, you can see the oxygen saturation coming after uh, two to three days. Now, blackening, gangrene is also not an indication to send the patient to higher centers. You can treat yourself in a, a, at your community health center itself, ladies and gentlemen. So this is how uh, we have uh, protocolized our snack bite victims. Uh, it may be overt bite, uh, overt bite uh, may be venomous bite, or it may be non-venomous bite, or it may be ocal blight. Now, uh, non-venomous bite is 75% most of the time. We put on a 24-hour observation, oplux is non nasal and we have to look about the anxiety and fear psychosis. Now, venomous bite are the 25%. It may be dry bite, it may be symptomatic. Dry means you have to look for the anxiety and the fear psychosis. For venomous bite, it's symptomatic. Two things may occur. Neuroparalysis means monoglade cobra or crate and symptomatic. Uh, if it is a progressive painful swelling, no blood clot means it is a peat vipers. Okay, so sometimes occult bite is there, means patient has no history of snake bite, but he develops unusual symptoms. So one patient, he came uh, at around uh, 7.30 a.m. with a pain, vomiting, and it looks like an acute pain abdomen, an acute, uh, but uh, history revealed that he slept in the floor without any mosquito net. Then we thought it may be a snake bite. Then we we'll look his uh, means removed his clot, and we found uh, two tiny dots in his uh, lumbar area in the back side. And then uh, we have injected uh, ten vials of ASB, and he recovered well. So this may happen. So you have to remember that uh, things also. There may be the dry bite, ladies and gentlemen, when the snake is venomous, but in, um, uh, venomous not injected to the patient. So this is the monoslate cobra, and there is a two tiny, tiny dot you can see, um, but uh, still the patient does not develop any symptoms that are called a dry bites. So in our practice, monoclate uh, uh, cobra is having uh, 25 patients. We got a dry bite patient. Peat viper around 18 patients, great. None of the patients having the dry bite means when say they bite, there is a, and there are many in our practice, uh, what we have found that uh, in every patient they have injected the venom and red neck kill back. All 35 patients were not injected venom. So this is the miraculous drug, ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, myopyrolate injection because the cobra venom causes post block. And this is the drug. If you give in the early part, the patient's reverse and is a miracle drug. And we used to tell our public that if you is, uh, do not have any antivenom, uh, keep this drug in your local area, local pharmacy, and keep injecting the drugs at uh, a 30 minute interval till you reach the hospital if the patient develop neurotoxic symptom. So you can, in the students, that things are same, but you have to remember the park as it does. And these are a few of the children's you can see. And interestingly, you see, uh, in the, from uh, 2008 to 2018, we had did a lot many workshops. We have uh, done many public awareness program, but still the only 55 patients came to the hospital. But from 2018 to 21, 2028 patients came to the hospital. This is very interesting, very encouraging. And of that, uh, three were venomous in, the, in, in 2008 to uh, 18. And 304 number of patients was venomous snake uh, in 2018 to 2021 uh, period. And in the 170 numbers of the patients uh, was uh, this um, um, ASB was injected. And you can see date uh, in 18 to 21 is only two, but here 8 to 18 
one number so the, the patient died and these two patients were died because they attended late to our hospital and in the, in the late stage which we could not reverse at all so 30 days follow up of all of the patients giving asv is necessary because they sometimes develop late reactions and uh, including the bite area so many, many a patient in the pit viper patient they have this cytotoxic capsules the effects like swelling for many a days so this is our experience of uh, giving ASBs, 3509 numbers of the files uh, of ASB administered. And we have uh, un found untold reaction of fever, rigor, chills, and the urticaria, and which responded to heart condition, fendiramine, and adrenaline, and no major reactions are observed. And 30 days followed, a uh, patient was followed up, and 11 patients developed uh, some joint pain, feverish like symptoms that is called the late reactions. And we, enjoy, uh, we manage with just oil, uh, corticosteroids, ladies and gentlemen. Always remember, no to diclofenac and no to sedation in all snake bite victims. Now, when to refer from community health centers or uh, primary health centers? Never refer any neurotoxicity patient without ASB and neostigmine. This is a crime. If you refer a patient without uh, of a neurotoxicity patient without ASB and neostigmine, it is a crime. Activate the tertiary center where you are transferring. You just activate and tell, tell them these things are happening. You should be keep ready. Transport during transportation. Uh, you give the ASBs, neostigmines, and plus ambu bag ventilation. This is a must, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, regarding this, uh, we have submitted our uh, uh, view in uh, World Congress of Anesthesiologists recently. These anesthesiologists are the true leaders in the snake bite and animation, a retrospective review on 307 patient. And this poster was adjusted. Uh, in, in based on 200 poster, uh, posters uh, during the uh, World Congress of uh, Anesthesiology. And there we have uh, presented our uh, concept of BRT and then FRT and our snake bite room. And uh, why the anesthesiology should be take uh, lead? Because we are the uh, we are we are trained uh, uh, in, in in the airway. We are trained in uh, resuscitation. We are trained in the anaphylaxis, and we are good communicators. And this all makes as an uh, uh, as an uh, leader uh, in this subject, ladies and gentlemen. And if, if we come forward, then we can prevent many, many, many deaths in the India, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, what we have presented during WCA. So to conclude. Anesthesiologists are the leaders in the snake bite management. Yes, we can prevent many deaths if we come forward. And one of our greatest social recognition work it will be. And satisfaction what I'm getting by uh, uh, working on this subject, I just cannot express into words. And these are few of our uh, Facebook post. You can go through my whole profile. I here there you can you can see the about uh, my social work that is uh, I'm working for the snake bite, not only for the snake bite but also for the anesthesia, anesthesiologist, and other allied substance uh, subjects. Thank you very much.